Wow, Luca. Ah! That was hard to watch. Welcome back to Director's Choice. Luca is Pixar's latest animated feature that follows the adventures of Luca and his friends, and according to a popular conspiracy narrative, it follows the Pixar theory. Something's fishy with you two. Ooh. This is too dangerous. <laughs> In this episode of Director's Choice, we're going to take a look at the big news on Luca. Silencio Bruno! Silencio Bruno! Silencio Bruno! Silencio Bruno! Released in June 2021, Luca has served a summer, feels, and the beauty of the Italian Riviera set in the 1950s to the 1960s, which set the base for the theory that it fits along the epic Pixar timeline that you'll find out in the next few minutes. Just kidding. Definitely look at it. How does the simplicity of its storyline make Luca a great movie? What part of the movie is the biggest pointer to the Pixar theory? And what are the Easter eggs hidden in the plot of Luca? Here's everything you need to know about the big news on Luca. Go start the club for losers! Let's get right to it. If you haven't heard about the Pixar theory, well, firstly, have you been keeping up with Pixar? And secondly, we've got you covered. Here's a quick rundown. In 2013, John Negroni came up with the Pixar theory that has now been popularized and used to link every Pixar production to date. Spoiler alert, it includes all Disney Pixar films. The original theory rearranges the Pixar movies from their release date to the chronological order of the dates in which the films are set. And the core of this theory is that all Pixar movies exist in the same universe, and the events of each movie are intertwined on three main elements, monsters, humans, and machines. This organic fuel is great. Why haven't I heard about it before? It's a conspiracy, man. The oil company's got a grip on the government. They're feeding us a bunch of lies, man. The Pixar theory kicks off from the good dinosaur, which is dated 65 million years ago, when dinosaurs and other creatures existed with magical features and were able to advance to human-like intelligence. The theory then continues in Brave, set in the 14th to 15th century where the magical element is fully introduced with the witch explaining how animals in the Pixar universe got their powers. The universe progresses to the 1960s in The Incredibles, showing the evolution of technology and the zero-point energy gotten from human emotions, which we later relate to in Monsters, Inc. and Inside Out. The Toy Story movies prove the zero-point energy correlation further, and by Toy Story 2, there is the obvious resentment from animals and objects due to humans mistreating and abandoning them. Finding Nemo focuses more on the resentment from animals about humans' pollution and their resentment continues in Finding Dory. By the time we get to Ratatouille, which is set in 2007, and Up, which is set between 2011 and 2016, we see that the human energy exchange has gotten to the point of communication between animals and humans. While the 2015 set, Inside Out, explained that joy is a powerful emotion, which we got to understand better in Monsters, Inc. Coco, set in 2018, took the human connection further into memories. The post-current time Pixar movies, Cars, Cars 2, WALL-E, and A Bug's Life, take us through the battle between human and machines, and the evolution of animals into stronger beings. The mutated animals are seen in Monsters University, the origin story of monsters, who are basically deformed animals, which brings us to Luca. Whew, that was a long one, but now you're all caught up. Your hands are as big as my face! That is crazy! Jack, calm down. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now that we've established the order of evolution and mutation of monsters and other creations in the Pixar universe, let's see how Luca settles into it. The titular character, Luca Perugo, is a sea monster, and his species kind of reminds us of mermaids. Living primarily underwater, the sea monsters appear in their natural form when in contact with water, but when they step on land and out of contact with water, they appear as humans. Luca and his family live underwater, and he is known and loved by all. But when his parents threaten to make him live with his weird uncle, Ugo, in the deep sea, Luca runs away with his newfound friend, Alberto, a sea monster who lives on the surface, and they become friends with Julia. Be a jerk because he keeps winning the race, which he shouldn't even get to do anymore because he's too old and too much of a jerk. 
<laughs> a human girl who lives in Porto Rosso, where sea monsters are at risk. Like most Pixar movies, Luca follows the adventures of the three friends as they journey through jealousy, challenges, and personal dreams to find true happiness. But despite the simple, heartwarming nature of the animated movie, there are several hidden Easter eggs in Luca that have our theorists' antennas buzz, buzz, buzzing. Pronti, posti, via! I got this. Wait, what? Every year they change the pasta. You have to be ready for anything. Could be canelo. As we mentioned earlier, the Pixar theory follows the timeline of events in Pixar movies. From the background designs on the animated set, as well as confirmation from the director, Enrico Casarosa, Luca is based in the 1950s and 1960s, placing it in chronological order before the events of The Incredibles. And how is this proven? Stick with us to find out. While the humans in Porto Rosso initially celebrated the killing of the sea monsters, they were still pretty fast to accept Luca and Alberto as their neighbors, rather than their enemies. The winners! Luca! Let us through! What? And that falls in line with the timeline, because it was way before animals and machines began to resent humans and their pollution. It's also before animals fully evolved into smart and conscious beings. Luca's work underwater was herding goatfish, and from the movie, it's obvious that they weren't overtly smart or mentally advanced, which fits the timeline because we don't see smart fish till Finding Nemo, and that's set in 2003. Our final Easter egg, and arguably the biggest pointer to the Pixar theory, is the fact that the water we see in the underwater scenes is actually clean. In every Pixar movie set in the 2000s, where there is resentment or disagreement between humans, animals, monsters, and machines, shots of the water or deep sea shows pollution and dirt. And that brings Luca to a fine point in the Pixar theory timeline. But that's not all. To start, stack everything one on top of the other, like a pile of rocks. Great. I mean, fine, whatever. Another fascinating angle of Luca in the Pixar theory is from Alberto and his missing dad. Alberto's father is missing for all of the movie's duration, but he is a constant topic of conversation, which is highly reminiscent of the Coco theme. You live up here? Yeah, me and my dad. He's not even here a whole lot, so I pretty much just do whatever I want. That as long as you are remembered, you don't die a final death. While next to nothing is known about him, we know that the tiny voice in Alberto's head is called Bruno. And Bruno Motoro from Cars has a profile that almost exactly fits the very little that we know about Alberto's father. Now we know that the cars take on the personality of their old owners, so it is possible that Alberto's father had abandoned him, and in the course of his travels, he drove what we now know as Bruno Motoro. Or maybe it's just a loose hanging thread in the theory. Guido, it's time. Hey, Tiny, you gonna clean his windshield? <laughs> in the evolution of the Pixar universe, Animals mutated and became sophisticated. Humans fought against monsters and won. And a whole lot happened between The Good Dinosaur and Cars 3. But there are two angles where Luca falls into the Pixar theory. Firstly, the monsters from Monsters, Inc. may simply be a more dominant version of the sea monsters in Luca. Secondly, and more likely, the supers in The Incredibles may include the sea monsters, and they just aren't noticed because they're on land which means they'd be in their human form. Back into the sunlight. We need to change people's perceptions about superheroes, and Elastigirl is our best play. Which of these angles do you think is more likely? Let us know in the comments section. Luca also falls into the Pixar theory with a loop. Boo from Monsters, Inc. is really obsessed with finding Sully and travels through time using doors, eventually becoming the old witch in Brave who has the power to turn humans into animals. Now Monsters, Inc. occurs a bit further in the future than Luca, but it is possible that a time loop was created in the Pixar universe, and Boo is the witch who created the sea monsters. A reach? Maybe. But that's the substance of all theories. Luca is a great animated movie, with a lot of fun moments and several connections to the Pixar theory. At the end of the day, Productions from the same company are sure to have interconnecting links, so it's very likely that all these movies are occurring in the same universe. Have you watched Luca? 
What are your thoughts on it? Let us know in the comment section. That's all for today. Thanks for joining us on the breakdown of the Pixar theory that Luca is set in the same universe as other Pixar movies. Take a moment to look at this other recent clip by Director's Choice and be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring that bright notification bell to get alerts for our latest videos.